Showtime. All right. I'm live. You're live with me. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to part two. Stepping over equipment. Hey, what's going on, man? We are live right now. I am pumped. Can you see that? No, I can see that. All right. I'm pumped for you. I'm pumped that you're here. I'm so excited that you're tuning in to my live segment. Um, yeah, let's talk. Let's chat. Let's keep the conversation going. As I always say, welcome to Trainer Talk Diaries, where we bring the conversations that happen in the training studio virtually, since that's where we all are right now. So yesterday, I taught you guys about my philosophy of mastering your fitness journey. It takes an immense amount of planning. It takes goal setting, and there's a process to goal setting. We talked about outcome goals, which are goals that you want to happen, such as I want to save money, I want to start a family, I want a clean bill of health. But most of those goals don't actually happen because we lose the step process. We don't have a step process to it. Some of us either go no days off and push too hard or we get overwhelmed by the huge audacious goal in front of us. So then I talked about something called process goals and process goals are little steps you take to get there. And I refer to these process goals as domino pieces, not the game dominoes where you're smashing the table and breaking up things. I'm talking about dominoes like you're pushing over some dominoes and you're seeing a awesome um, system of them falling down, right? Each domino represents a stage in the process of you getting to your goal. So that's what we covered yesterday. Today, I'm going to let you in a little bit more on that strategy. We're going to kick it off with a three-step strategy of lining up your dominoes. And um, let's get going. Um, if you are live right now, I'm going to see who's live with me. Right now, right now, right now. Okay, no one live just yet. Look, this is a live thing, so you can definitely chime in. I know it doesn't look live, but I am live. The only way I can see it is when I look here. So definitely leave your comments um, before we get jump jump into this. Uh, oh, oh, quick, almost forgot. I was on TV last night. Um, I had an amazing interview with News 12. They interviewed me. I talked about my virtual training platform, how we are offering free classes to the community just as an outlet. For, for kids to bring back gym, for adults to, to figure out a way to manage their stress. And they aired it. And it came on last night, and I believe it came on this morning. But if you missed out, I got it right here for you. You ready? Chime in right now. Let's do this. Listen up. was our fitness face-off winner this year. Now he's helping you win with free virtual fitness classes. How the wall is your baby come on? We're offering our new most interactive classes on the internet. Despite Why? everyone being yeah. confined to their come homes, on, he's helping clients and beyond get up and get active. We are very much disconnected, but I kind of flipped it and said we are more connected just because the internet is literally right in front of us. And the workouts push you no matter where they're done. So that's the way we're going to make a burpee workout. And that's the way we're going to make a push-up workout. Rather than you just following an instructor online, you get to see that timer and then it becomes your own workout. Although his members are safe at home right now because of the pandemic, he's looking ahead to when things start to open up again. We want people to come back to the gym, but the way we're going to structure it is in times of training. He plans on having smaller classes with social distancing and more time to disinfect after each workout to keep everyone healthy. But for now, Hamilton's focused on the present. We have a big component of personal development, and I've been stressing it every day. How can we come out of this pandemic better? On top of adult classes, he also offers two free classes a week for kids. In the Throg's next section of the Bronx, Alexis Farrell, News 12. All right. So that was my segment. It was great to, to share that with Alexa. And I want to get more people involved. So if you want my free class schedule to work out virtually with me, 
hit me up send me your email right now i'll get you connected get you involved man we got a lot of virtual opportunities and like i said it's the most interactive workout on the interwebs okay let's dive back in let's start knocking away goals let's get you to stop procrastinating there is a strategy to to this there is a method to my madness i want to share that with you right now let's get high tech here i'm going to share a mini screen of my slideshow with you so i consider this a three-step process when it comes to conquering goals now the three-step process is a brain dump a staging area and then you got to systemize it those are the three stages you're seeing in that corner right there now brain dump is super important i mean it's probably the most important part of this whole like seminar i'm giving you you have to be able to get the head trash out of here one of our mentors talks about doing a brain dump every week. Now, brain dump for me is literally sitting down, writing down anything that comes in here. Strategically, I'm either doing it for my business, uh, I'm doing it for my emotions, getting it out. Sometimes you just got to go like, what the heck is going on up here? Why am I either, either being the worst enemy to myself or why am I even ruminating on, on thoughts? So a lot of times we may get an idea to do a goal. Hey, I'm going to go running, right? And then the day comes, you want to go running, and then you go, ah, I'm not really go running that right now. Something happened there. Maybe you thought it was too much, right? So bring them. Get it out your body. Get it out your system and start writing things down immediately. Writing it down so you have a visual component in front of you. And after your brain dump, you have to stage it. Staging just means whatever you've written down, See if it made sense. See if your worries made sense. See if you can start picking away the things that you've written down and start doing the things that you can start maybe that day or that week, right? A lot of times we look at a goal as too big. Like I showed you in my past presentation, you have to chop it away little by little by setting up those domino pieces. So after you staged it and picked out what works for you, I call it systemize. So Here's what I'm going to do. I want to go running, so I'm going to put my shoes by the door, and then I'm going to pick up my clothes the night before, and then I'm going to have a glass of water in the morning. So things like that. Like It's not so much like, I'm just going to get up and go running, right? It's just the, the mind is constantly in protection. That sounds crazy to the mind. Why would I go running when I'm perfectly fine in my house? So those system, systems you're creating will help you get into the, the habit or the routine you're trying to create. That's the whole thing with the three steps to your dominoes. That's one way to be more accountable, right? You got a brain dump, then you got to figure out the crap you wrote in the paper makes sense, and then you got to systemize it. Does that make sense? All right, if it doesn't, let me know. Um, this is a funny picture right here. This guy is literally doing what a lot of people do. That's that no days off mentality. That's that I'm going to go hard in the gym and not stretch, not look at the time, not worry about my personal schedule. He is not planning, so he's gonna fail. He's gonna knock his dominoes over, and as you can see, it's gonna knock him over. Okay, let's talk about one of my favorite, favorite topics. Favorite topics of all time. You answer this in the comments section. Do you believe willpower is stronger than environment, or your environment is stronger than willpower? You decide in the comment section. Let me know now. All right. Let's have a little talk about this. Let's have a little debate while you're deciding. I have a funny story for you. Or not really a story, an actual funny experiment. Now, this experiment was taken from the book Mindless Eating. Right. So these three secretaries were a part of an experiment. They knew they were a part of something, but they didn't know exactly what it was. Here's what was going on. For one month, Someone placed chocolate in different places of their workspace. So let's say week one, they put the chocolate in front of them. Week two, they put the chocolate kind of close by, but not in front of them. And then like week three, they put it in another office. The secretary started to catch on, but they didn't really catch on to what was going on. Now, what happened when the chocolate was right in front of them, they would just graze and eat, mm, eating that Hershey Kisses chocolate, and they would just eat maybe like nine pieces of chocolate a day. 
Now, when the chocolate was maybe on someone else's desk and it was, it was, in reach, it was reachable, they will uh, get up and still get some chocolate, but maybe that was like six pieces a day. When it was in another room, they either ate one or three pieces of chocolate a day. Who do you think stronger? Was it their willpower or was it the environment? If you said environment, you're right. Here's what happened. When it was closer to them, these secretaries end up eating 300 more calories a day. 300 more calories a day, that's a lot. <laughs> um, when it was like close by, but reachable, they might have had 100 more calories a day. And then if it was like at the distance, maybe that's like 60 calories a day. Those add up. That's a lot of, that's a lot of calories in one day when it's on your desk. This is why I'm always stressing to clean out your cabinets. Get the food out of your house. Uh, one of my friends, he says, do not invite the enemy over. That pretty much means if you know you like donuts, don't bring the donuts into your house. Maybe you go out and eat that type of food. Don't have it in your house. Don't have it in your environment. You're going to fall. You're, you're going to fail. You're going to eat that food. So to help me drive this home, to help you understand that environment means everything, let's talk the common language of memes. So the meme right here is funny. You forgot to eat breakfast, but someone bought donuts. Yes. Going to eat those donuts, right? Like if they're in the conference room, you're going to eat the donuts. It's there. How many times you walk to the conference room, you walk over and you go, oh, donuts. You had a donut. You didn't intend to have a donut. It's just there. All right. Give me your best Thor impression. I shall increase my willpower. Right? That was okay, right? So a lot of people think I can just get my willpower stronger. No. Willpower is strong. It is something that we use. But it fades, it goes away. You have to constantly replenish it. If it's not in your environment, you won't have to replenish it. All right, your best Doc Vader. All right, getting tired. All right, the willpower is strong in this one. So that's someone that's maybe practicing where their, their food is not in the house. And if it's there, they will have some. Now this person right here is an expert. They're at a cookout. They're in the office, the food's there, and they're like, nope, doesn't phase me because I've developed discipline. And this is what you get. If you keep practicing those habits of not having the food in the house, not having the temptation there, right? You're gonna get disciplined, you get disciplined, you get disciplined, you get disciplined. So this is what I keep trying to hone in on with, uh, with clients, with new clients that come to me like, oh man, I don't know, I got this eating problems. Like, yo, what's in your house? Clean the cupboards, get it out the house. I guarantee you, you get the foods out the house, you won't gain the weight. You won't feel terrible. You won't binge uh, Netflix and binge eat at the same time. All right, let's talk about what we're trying to get better at. Habit, <laughs> habits, habits. My friend over here, Elma Fudd, he is habit hunting. You should constantly find ways to get better by looking for new habits. Like for myself, I was like, all right, I'm gonna be quarantined. I need to have as many weights here as possible. I need to create a space in my living room to work out so it doesn't feel arduous to work out. And then I gotta make it a habit, all right? I gotta figure out a good time that I can work out where I feel replenished. Right, maybe I shouldn't work out in the afternoon because I'm tired, right? So these are habits that you have to create. Um, a great book I'm gonna refer, we're gonna dive into a little bit more on Friday. I, want to, I don't want to rush through this, I want to do a little truncated version today, is The Habit Loop by Charles Duhigg. Now, I read The Habit Loop maybe two times already, and on the second read, it truly resonated with me. It did. It made sense. It, it simply was, and I'll show you in the next slide, there are three reasons why we create habits. It's a cue, there's a routine, and reward. All right, cue, routine, and reward. And once you understand that, you won't be susceptible to eating the foods that you're not, you're not you know, you're not gonna wanna eat. Okay, here's a fun quote, I don't know who, who said it, but we first make our habits, and then our habits make us, right? You're constantly in auto drive, and then all of a sudden, boom, overweight, how did this happen, right? All right, we're gonna go into this on Friday a lot more, and then nutrition, because it's, super important but 
definitely maybe like look at the cliff notes now go to amazon just check out the habilut it is a good read it isn't nerdy stuff it's actually really entertaining and his vo like he has a great voice behind um, explaining this he's a, more of a news reporter than a psychologist so he offers a great look into how habits are created through his own research so like i said q reward routine all right i'm gonna give you one example of that without uh, beating a dead horse here now with a q that means something has occurred for you to want something to happen so the first thing would be maybe you're feeling tired right Oh man, long day. I've been working more doing virtual phone calls and Zoom calls. Let me get some coffee. That's the routine. The reward is feeling more awake. So what I like to do with some of our members is we try to figure out what's the cue for you eating late. The routine would be go to the cabinet where the food is and the reward is to feel satiated, to feel full, to feel complete. All right. So I want to dive in a little bit more. This is a topic I don't want to rush through, but I do want to stress what we talked about in the beginning of setting up times to do a brain dump session. You got to get it out your head, get the head trash out of here, write it down, right? This is the worst enemy right here. Sometimes we're the worst enemy to ourselves. So get all the thoughts out. After you get the thoughts out, you have to stage it. So whatever you've written down, see if you can start applying it to your day, your week, your schedule. All right. A lot of times, like I said, we just go that no days off mentality. I'm just going to do it. And sometimes it works for some people, but you're going to get burned out. We're looking for a consistency here. You want to be longevity, right? And then after you do that, you got, you see what works for you. You start creating systems, right? You start creating systems to me means habits, right? Things that come natural. So we're going to dive into that a lot more on Friday and let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. We got some comments here. People were responding to the willpower so rosie said both you're right you're right but it's more so environment when you're looking in terms of not even like if it's not available then i won't have it right habit hunting like that one lewis <laughs> so yeah um thanks for chiming in so tomorrow i have a special guest on train talk diaries so remember train talk diaries are the conversations you have in the studio with the members with the clients and I'm always referring out. So a lot of my clients, they go, oh, I got, I got lower back pain. Ah, I got lower back pain, lad. I don't know what's going on. So tomorrow, I'm gonna bring it in a chiropractor, Dr. Caseman. He is the owner of Caseman Family Chiropractic, and we're gonna talk about his services. We're gonna talk about how COVID-19 affected him and his business, and I actually have two special guests this week. I got Dr. Caseman tomorrow morning at 8.30, and I got my good friend, Kathleen Shefflin, She's going to hop on the live with me on Thursday at three o'clock. We're going to talk about how cooking can be therapeutic around these times. All right. So get your questions ready. Chime in so you can have to keep the conversation going. And let's share this if it was informative for you. Thank you. Thank you for chiming in. Let's keep it going. Um, if you're a lifelong learner, definitely share this. Definitely share this. And um, let's keep the comments going. I'm going to look on my computer right after this to answer your questions. Thank you for chiming in. Have a great day. Bye.